How do you build a cyber truck? Okay, not really. A cyber go-kart from scratch. Today, the Xtool Maker Force team is starting a fun, surprisingly straightforward project, taking a cyber go-kart from CAD to the road, sharing every file, step, and build tip along the way. First off, the materials fall into two categories, stuff you make and stuff you buy. You'll be making the frame tubes and body panels. You'll be buying the power kit and the connectors. The full parts list is down below the video. Super easy to grab, nothing wild. Now, here comes the MVP of the project, Xtool Metal Fab, our main fabrication platform. This thing basically lets you build a cyber cart even if you've never welded a single thing in your life. Automated cutting is the secret to efficiency. And to get cleaner, more accurate pipe cuts, we actually built an automatic pipe cutting rig ourselves. It's not hard to make, We'll share the full material list and build notes in the comments. Before cutting pipes, mark the lengths so you don't mess up. If that feels too much, you can totally just use an angle grinder. After each cut, sand the ends so everything fits nicely during assembly. Pipes are ready. Time to build the frame. Every step of the assembly is explained clearly in our design drawings, so don't worry about getting lost. Once everything is mocked up and aligned, it's time to start welding, before the road test. Now we bring the metal fab back in, this time, for welding. Safety gear on. Don't skip this part unless you enjoy spicy sparks. We're using the stainless steel welding mode for one millimeter plates. Start with tack welds to lock each joint in place. After checking everything, switch to wire feeding mode to fully weld the joints. This gives the frame way better strength, like actually holding the strength of two grown dudes. When welding curved seams, don't rush. Go too fast and the wire sticks. Just steady the torch and follow the arc slowly. You'll get a beautiful, smooth weld. Nice. Main joints reinforced. Time for a road test. Testing stability, power, weight capacity, and shocks. Light press on the accelerator. <sighs> nope, steering is totally wrong. Looks like we mounted the steering link in the wrong spot. The wheels are sitting at a weird low camber, too. Not great. Kind of cursed, honestly. After hitting some bumps, a few screws started loosening, and the wiring harness basically exploded itself apart. The extension on the steering link, yeah, that homemade piece is cracking. Two grown adults, around 270 pounds combined, stood on it, and it still didn't collapse. So yeah, if nothing else, the welds on this frame are officially not the problem. My brain is steering backwards now. I can't even tell left from right. Back to the drawing board. Some loose parts need a second reinforcement pass, but a few sections actually need a redesign. The steering issue is the biggest one. We have to relocate it. After moving it, the steering shaft is suddenly too short, so... Yep, more parts need redoing. <sighs> Let's tear it apart. We rebuild the custom parts, tack them in place, then weld them solid. No need to push hard. The gas pressure naturally pushes the torch back. After a bit of wrestling, done. Perfect fit. More reinforcement and we're ready for the next stage. Now let's use the Metal Fab's CNC platform. This turns the welder into a precision cutting machine. Swap the welding head for the cutting head, mount it on the base, and boom, metal cutting table. Before loading the sheets, peel the plastic film. If you don't, the electrode won't stay stable and it won't cut through the metal. Tighten the knobs on both sides. 
The airflow during cutting is strong enough to shake the sheet around like it's in a wind tunnel. We use Smart Nesting, which auto-arranges the parts tightly to save material. Set it to the default 1mm stainless steel settings. It's like cutting paper. It's very fast, and a metal sheet can be processed in just a few minutes. The edges look clean. No burrs. And don't forget to remove the leftover pieces inside. Love hiding. Number the parts, then start bending them according to the design diagrams. Use a protractor to check angles. Bend, hammer. Bend again, hammer again. After an hour of this, you'll realize building a cyber cart is basically an upper body workout disguised as a hobby. With the outer shell parts ready, we need a proper seat. Fire up the cutting table again. We're using 3mm stainless steel for the seat frame. Thicker metal handles weight better. After cutting the frame, we switch to the X-Tool P3 to cut the wooden panels. A little wood wax makes them look nicer and last longer. Hammering, assembling, and boom! Your cyber cart has its own custom seat. After building this seat, your biceps are going to gain at least one pound. It's not much. Now we weld the body shell. The first panel is crucial. Mark the center line carefully because symmetry affects everything that comes after it. Now we start welding the armor panels on one by one. And yes, make sure they're actually welded on, like really welded on. Once every part is stuck on, start filling all the gaps with continuous welds, including the corners and folds. Next up, we weld and install the remaining front end pieces. Welding is done. Some welds and edges are pretty sharp, so we grind and polish everything down. Congrats, you now have a full cyber go-kart. Total build time, 32.5 work hours. We can finally take it out for a spin. Let's go! Wait, before we head out, our helmet needs a little ceremonial customization. After all, it's part of the X-Tool Maker Force.